Welcome to FT World. Matteo Renzi, Italy's dynamic prime minister, has two new allies in his attempt to revive the fortune of the Italian economy. Low oil prices should help boost consumption, and at the same time, the quantitative easing program by the European Central Bank is already lowering the exchange rate and will hopefully get the banks to lend more. But will this be enough to reverse a decade and a half of very, very low economic growth? Discussing this with me today is Lorenzo Codogno, visiting professor at the LSE and founder of LC Macro Advisors. Welcome, Lorenzo. Thank you. So let's have a look at the first chart you brought with you, and it shows uh, inflation, which has come down really uh, sharply in Italy. That's the uh, red line. Not as bad as Spain, but still around zero. Well, as you can see here, there is a steady decline in inflation in many countries in Europe. Actually, Italy is no exception. Um, given that uh, the economic recovery is a bit lagging, what is we have seen in other European countries, it would actually justify a somewhat lower inflation uh, development. Uh, and uh, I would say it would be desirable to see some differentiation here. Uh, but uh, uh, if we assume that... So uh, inflation is a bit, it's still too low in Germany, for example. It should be. It's still too low in Germany. We, we should have more differentiation so that uh, that would allow basically countries like Italy or Spain uh, to recover some competitiveness and, and uh, strength their economy. But anyway, uh, I think if we assume that uh, the QE is effective in preventing uh, deflationary scenarios, um, low inflation is a blessing to some extent because, as you mentioned, supports uh, the purchasing power of consumers and supports uh, the economic recovery. On the other hand, it makes uh, life more difficult uh, in order to manage the high debt to GDP because clearly the debt dynamics depends on nominal GDP growth. Uh, and that is clearly a problem if you have a continued we'll low get, inflation. We'll get to the debt, but now let's have a look at the second chart. And it's really uh, one of the channels by which the ECB's quantitative easing program should work, and that's uh, credit. Now, as we see, the red line, um, the, the, the purple line for Italy, shows that credit growth has been really subdued, in fact, negative over the last uh, four or five years. Will QE help? Yeah, that, and more? That's a big question mark. I think QE can actually work uh, through different channels. The expectation channels, we have already seen quite a nice pickup in expectation throughout Europe and again also in Italy. The latest numbers were very, very encouraging. Uh, at the same time, it, also, it is also working through the asset channel. We have seen uh, stock exchanges going up in all countries and that is also very helpful. Um, it works through the exchange rate. But unfortunately, there is a big question mark uh, on the traditional credit channel because, as you can see here, there has been some stabilization, even a modest, uh, uh, you know, uh, a less, somewhat less negative year-on-year -year performance. But we are still far from uh, a clear improvement in uh, credit aggregates, and that can be a, a negative factor preventing a somewhat stronger recovery in Italy as well as in other countries. Now, obviously, this is one problem, but the other big problem the Italian economy has is uh, the public finance, and in particular the stock of debt. That's your third ch and final chart, which shows that government debt as a percentage of GDP is heading towards 140%. That's a lot. Now, in spite of, of deficit, uh, which has been uh, cut steadily, now, this is something you know very well because you worked as chief economist in the Italian Treasury. They're preparing now a big document to, to present to Brussels. Will they manage to finally stabilize the, the debt? Yeah, well, as you can see from this graph, uh, uh, the Italian government has been very prudent. Actually, the many Italian governments uh, that we have seen over in recent years have been very prudent because even in 2009, the deficit went up, uh, but not uh, uh, hugely so. And uh, 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 the Italian governments managed to reduce the deficit below uh, the 3% threshold uh, since uh, 2012, uh, basically going out of the excessive deficit procedure, uh, the Brussels uh, uh, procedure for uh, you know, managing uh, public accounts uh, in, uh, throughout Europe. Now, uh, what's next here? Uh, uh, certainly, with such a, a performance in terms of deficit, uh, the, the increase in debt to GDP is almost entirely uh, the result of very poor economic uh, growth, uh, nominal uh, GDP growth. So if we have a combination of somewhat uh, uh, higher inflation going forward and uh, more dynamic GDP uh, growth, 
that should actually help to reduce the debt to GDP. But if it all depends on uh, growth. So I think the key ingredients here is GDP growth. It's not. Do you deficit. think the government will have space to boost growth? Well, I think the combination of uh, the QE by the central bank, uh, somewhat weaker currency, and uh, certainly all the reforms implemented over the past few years should be enough to support economic activity going forward. So I think uh, for this year, probably something between half a percentage point and one full percentage point is a reasonable expectation. And I think the next year, uh, GDP growth might be stronger, something close to one and a half. Lorenzo Godogno, thank you very much Thanks for being so with us today. So a little bit more growth for Italy this year, but the revival of the Italian economy, which Matteo Renzi is hoping for, is still some way away.